the, he the heterogeneity of FSGS is clinically manifest by the observation that there's no single approach to therapy, no single therapeutic agent that achieves a favorable outcome in more than like 20 to 25% of patients. So nephrologists have thrown up a lot of options for the treatment of FSGS and the outcomes are usually not so great. In other words, they present with proteinuria and we can't modulate the proteinuria. And these people progress over time. They progress to end stage kidney disease over about a five to 10 year period of time. Clinical trials have been traditionally been judged whether they're successful or not by altering that need for renal replacement therapy or a 40% re doubling of serum creatinine. And the nephrologists have always advocated that proteinuria, which is the initial manifestation, that reduction in proteinuria is a surrogate marker for a favorable outcome. And what this, what we've done is we, it's sort of obvious. If you have lots of proteinuria and nothing changes, you're probably going to do bad because the proteinuria indicates that the glomeruli are not working. If you can achieve a complete remission, you've probably done something good because presumably the abnormal filtering units are, um, are healed. What about in between? And that's called a partial remission. And there's been a lot of ink spilt on defining a partial remission. And the paper that you alluded to with John Troost is an, an, an attempt to define a more meaningful partial remission endpoint. And the reason why that's valuable is because it's unusual to get a complete remission in, our, in response to our treatment. But we dem what that paper shows is that even if you reduce proteinuria meaningfully to this endpoint, then you can favorably impact on the, the patient's clinical course. Sparsentin is a unique drug. It's a dual receptor antagonist. In other words, it's a molecule that has built that as an integral part of the <coughs> of the structure. It blocks the angiotensin II receptor, and it also blocks the endothelial and type A receptor. And both of these systems have been implicated in progressive renal injury. And given separately, they've been shown to lower proteinuria. And the novelty of sparsentin is that it combines both of these not molecular actions in a single chemical, and therefore you sort of you double your, you know you get two two bangs for each buck. And the duet study was short term, and it showed a significant incremental reduction in proteinuria compared to arbisartan, which is an angiotensin II receptor blocker. And the duplex study is the phase three. Which is, which is designed to test the hypothesis that this drug not only lowers proteinuria, but actually has a favorable impact on the course of renal disease by reducing the rate of decline in GFR kidney function. Patients is the PROTECT trial, which is to test sparsentin in patients with IgA nephropathy, which is a more common form of glomerular disease with a prognosis that's not as grim as patients with FSGS. So that's, so they're sort of attacking the sort of the two ends of the spectrum FSGS, which is a less common disease, but more threatening to kidney health and IgA nephropathy, which is more common, but can have a more favorable course. <clears throat> 